After a long day of work, I return home to this. Now, I didn't even really be up, I wasn't really up to date with Path of Exile recently since I've been playing a lot of Helldivers, I've been playing a lot of other games, Last Epoch definitely as well, and I just see, suddenly, a post on like the main page in terms of Necropolis teasers, I'm like, yeah, let's, let's check it out. And I see the first uh, first update, since they go in order with, um, since they are posted, right, the, so the most recent one are on top. I'm reading this, and we have a plethora of quality of life improvements. I'm like, yeah, cool. What is it? The first one is being, when you upgrade a Pantheon power with a Divine Vessel, you'll now get to keep that upgrade on all characters across the league. So, this actually five, means five three, that... Changing how Pantheon powers work. When you upgrade a Pantheon power with a Divine Vessel, you will now get to keep that upgrade on all characters across the league. Yeah, I mean, it's straightforward. So if we just, you know, do, like, the typical, whatever, uh, Nassar Lion of the Seas... Wasn't that Brian King? Doesn't matter. We're 100% chance to be frozen every single time we take Soul of Brian King. That's awesome. On all characters. That's so cool. So even when just doing your first maps... Like, you don't have to worry about the Pantheon. It kind of makes it more viable now and actually kind of think and switch. And you don't have to constantly do it on all of your characters because some characters can be slightly dependent on Pantheon. I mean, that's just cool. That's just cool. That, that's something that is a... That's definitely, like, a nice addition. All right. Another quality of life improvement in Path of Exile Necropolis is the ability to control, shift, click a stackable item to move all copies of it in your inventory straight into a trade with... Is this what I think it is? I'll cut for you when trading with other players. By holding down Control and Shift, you can click a stackable item to move all copies of it in your inventory Finally. straight into the Jeez. trade Jeez, I can trade this all of my transmutes and alteration orbs so much faster. <laughs> no, no, but you know, whenever you, you have that kind of trade where you do need to trade like a full inventory of, you know, one divine per 1200 alteration orbs or whatever you know it, it it just oh so much better when bulk buying bubblegum currency this is huge no wow okay so much less clicking it just reduces like the fact of having a scroll mouse wheel macro that's great that's just great amounts of currency I that's amazing okay uh, you can also control left click in or console equivalent, okay, to reapply socket and quality currency. Huh? This one's for you. When applying some currency items like orbs of fusing yeah. or jeweler's orbs, you will now be able to constantly use those orbs without having to repeatedly click your mouse or the equivalent on controller. As long as you hold down control, so and it left -click, took you so many years. To add into the game a control and hold left click button in order to do this. Okay. You will use orbs until you run out or until the goal is achieved. Meaning that jeweler's orbs can be held down on an item until it achieves maximum sockets, or orbs of fusing can be held down until it achieves maximum links. We'll talk. Wow. In Path of Exile and Necropolis, opening breach hands in the heat of battle just got easier. They know. Okay. That just makes breach. The breach hand chests spawned during breach encounters have always been very annoying to click on in the heat yes. of battle. Not only that, you have usually loot on the ground, but you also, even if you have movement on left click, you can still just click the mobs that are there, especially in higher pack size maps, and you focus on that. You try to click the clasped hand, and you're either clicking on something else. And you're wasting so much time when you should be clearing like the other side and you're just here trying to click a small clasped hand. In 324, we will be changing them to no longer require clicking to open. Just run near them and they'll open automatically. Perfect. That's all you needed to do. That's that's big. That's big. Okay, and I did hear, and the thing that motivated me the most is I heard that there's a Viled Chaos Orb change. So, Necropolis Viled Orbs have now been reworked. Lasks can get... Huh? Masters are no longer mutually exclude. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. And can appear in the same map and craft to upgrade your amulet to a talisman has been moved to bestiary. Okay, I didn't even know that something like that existed in my 3,000 hours of game time. Hi. 
I'm Mark Roberts, Game Director on Path of Exile. In 324, the Masters, Alva of Incursion, Nico of Delve, Einhar of Bestiary, and Jun of Betrayal will no longer be mutually exclusive and can appear in the same map. Speaking of Betrayal, cool. we're making the following changes. The Ashling reward- It just allows, like, early on, for example, to farm, like, Aisling in Alva, I don't know, whatever. Uh, when you're delving, you can also do something. Sometimes, like, mutual masteries were okay. So the Aisling reward to remove a random modifier- off, Remove a random modifier- And add a new Replacing it one. with a Veiled modifier instead- has been moved to the function of the Veiled Chaos Orb. Huh. Well, that's a game changer. Literally one line of text changed from place to place changes the game so much. Okay, well, obviously Veiled Chaos Orbs now need to be rare, right? and has been removed from safe houses. Veiled Chaos Orbs will now exclusively drop from Katarina, the leader of the Immortal Syndicate. This makes the orb more powerful, but also allows for full trading of this craft between players and a more clear path to target farming this orb by maximizing your Katarina kills. The cape- Oh. Is it 100% drop chance? Is it like 30%? Is it 20%? What is the drop chance on the Veiled Orb? Because technically, every single time you did a syndicate, you could almost guarantee yourself every single time an Aisling. Which meant that you could do June missions efficiently. Especially that, you know, having one encounter, like one good tier four, was quite just like almost every single time you do, uh, you know, syndicate missions. Having two was also quite common. But Katarina is always there, obviously. But is it also a hundred percent drop chance? Is it something like I don't know? You do Uber Maven, and she will always drop an Awakened Sexton, right? Is it also the same thing? Like every single time you do Katarina, she just drops a Vile Orb, or is it as rare as I don't know Elder Slayers? Because doing Katarina isn't like a one second thing, right? It's not something that that doesn't take additionally extra a couple of maps a lot capability to add higher than 20 percent quality to weapons armors and flasks has been removed from betrayal okay so hillock has changed too and these reward outcomes have been replaced okay your flasks can now be corrupted okay so nothing can changed. now be corrupted by val orbs which will add a random okay screwed up the quality but added plus five to maximum resistances so it no wait the ruby flask itself is changed this is the base so ruby flask doesn't do reduce damage anymore from fire it's just plus five fire resistance and plus fire resistance oh that's interesting which will does add the topaz a random also quality work value like that from my yeah it does Whoa, plus okay. 10 to plus 10. Good luck. Yeah, the same works like here. So they changed the resistance flask from reduced damage to just maximum resistance. That's cool. That's cool. I think they did that change because they realized, I'm kind of hoping this way, they realized that people like playing and enjoy playing like higher resistance tanky builds and there wasn't, I mean, there is obviously, mm -hmm. Like, high-level purity of fire can give you, you know, additionally uh, overcapped resistances. But, so like, a lot of the additional plus to maximum resistances is usually, like, on shields. It's on jewels and gems. So a common thing was, like, now in, in Affliction, we had charms with, like, plus two fire res, especially on MF, like, Fulcrum builds or the Autobomber. Um, so you could have like plus six there, then you had the tree, then you had it that was taken, which I heard that is removed from the core drop. Um, and it's just like on standard right now and it, it won't exist anymore. So, I mean, it makes sense. It was a boss drop unique that isn't in 
the core game anymore. Affliction isn't isn't staying. So having it change like this seems really weird, but also cool. Because I'm just thinking, because the thing was, I'm not sure if this is a nerf or a buff. Because I'm wondering now that if we enchant this um, in terms of flask effect, because I'm, I'm guessing that the plus five cold resistance is going to be during flask effect. So I'm thinking about, you know, 70% increased effect mage blood. So is the 25% increase effect, 75% increase effect, is this going to give us like plus nine to maximum cold resistances if we do, you know, if we have 95% increased effect on it plus mage bud and some additionally, you know, increased effect from flasks like on Pathfinder? Could we potentially have, you know, plus 12 maximum cold resistances from just one flask that would be cool but i don't really know how it like matches with other things like is this a nerf or a buff compared to 20 percent reduced damage taken from fire cold lightning whatever right because 20 percent damage with the increased effect essentially made it like almost 40 50 percent less damage right is this, I, I, I'm just curious right now on how this really affects the tankiness of builds. Plus, maximum resistance is cool, and capping resistances is cool too. But I'm just wondering, like, what will the, what will the corruptions change? To plus 10. Good luck. Because, like, he's corrupting things, and I'm trying to see, like, what is he corrupting, and, and is it even changing anything? It's a showcase. There has to be some changes. By okay, first one did nothing, right? Second one, fire, max charges, whatever. Would you add a random okay, nothing happened. It just changed the quality. Value. Basically, can break the quality. Oh yeah, there you go. Quality, 25%. But up the quality. Just 10... Okay, so yeah, so the cor okay, I didn't realize. I guess it only changes the quality with the vol orbs. Is it only the quality? Orbs, which will add a random quality value from minus ten to plus ten. Good okay. luck. Okay, so you can have a thirty percent quality flask now only if you vol it instead of doing uh, syndicate. Okay, interesting. And then the talisman, I don't really care about that. Okay, these changes are cool. I mean, there's still so many, like, quality of life changes that I, I, I would think would be nice. But it's hard for me to say that there's a person that's reading this and is, like, disappointed in these changes besides the vile chaos orbs, right? So I'm not sure if I'm the only one that checked, you know, noticed the flasks bases being different. Uh, but, like, the Vile Chaos Orb, I mean, like, damn, that's gonna make crafting so much more difficult, because, and also, having Vile mods just on your bench, because you're actually going to have to farm the Syndicate now in order to get it, unless you want to just buy it off of other players, but, like, what are, Vile Orbs, are they going to go from literally, like, a 10 Chaos item into a 10 Divine item? And if so... I mean, there's multiple crafts where you just need to constantly redo, I don't know, suffixes cannot be changed, uh, Vild Orb, right? And I like that now the Vild Orb also just removes one mod instead of just, like, re-rolling everything. So it's an easier gamble as well, because it's just, like, quite literally then a, like, 33% uh, chance if you have, like, everything maxed out. So then you can still use like a vile or i mean it's cool it's cool uh because you know what i'm thinking if, if you have a, already a six affix item you could use a vile orb and have you know a one out of six chance to remove a mod that you don't want and if you have like two crappy mods and it's just like worth to slam it to see if you get anything good removed uh just to potentially like upgrade it with some sort of uh vile mod but I mean, it's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see like which way this goes to and how this is going to evolve overall. I mean, it, it's just weird. 
interesting. It's definitely interesting, but it's weird. Like, I didn't really see a problem with Vile Orbs, and a change like this is just, like, out of the blue, in my opinion. But besides the Vile Orbs, I, I don't see how anybody could be actually complaining over this. I think it's great, honestly. These changes are awesome, and they should be in the game already fucking decades longer before. <laughs> So, yeah, anyways, I mean, that, that, that's just a quick notes and, like, my opinion, my thoughts about it. I mean, if you are interested in content like this as well, when I'm just speaking more about the core game, uh, instead of just doing, like, a guide or something, then make sure to let me know, please, uh, in the comments below. I, I'd really love that from all of you. Uh, so, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, everyone, and uh, peace out. Love you all.